Hi, Chloe. Good morning, Angela. How are you? Good. The sun's shining. It's a lovely, lovely. day out there. It's starting to feel very nice and springy. Spring and it wasn't dark till eight last night. I know it's beautiful, isn't it? And yeah. hopefully we're coming through the other side, so long as touch wood, nothing goes wrong. Yeah, and we've both had our vaccinations now. Is yeah, I have my, okay? I have mine on Sunday, and I um, about four o'clock. I literally had a thumping headache, sweating, oh. everything else all through the night. Monday I didn't feel well, and today it's like I'm back to normal. They say that that's that's good. That it means that your body's got a good immune immune system, and the you know it's doing its job properly. So, I took paracetamol right. when I got back. Somebody said to do that, and I think that helped. And the next morning, I just felt fluey. I think the younger you are, the worse you feel by the sounds of it. So, but well, I'm not that young. So <laughs> no, we're we're the same. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm pleased that's done, you know, obviously there's another one to do, but yeah, I was very, very, very impressed with the it, chirpy, delightful volunteers involved that must be saying the same thing hundreds of times a day with a smile on their face. They were wonderful. I, I, do you know I, the thing I love the most? I went to the Brighton Centre, you went to the race hill, didn't you? No, I went to the um, Brighton Centre. Uh, oh, okay. And... Um, so it was really well organised, lots of volunteers. I love looking at everyone my own age group. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking, they, they don't look the same age as me. <laughs> and some, some people look so old, don't they? They've got like, they're immobile and they need to do some work on keep looking after themselves, yeah. I think, some people. Well, I'm lying about but that. I love to... Um, my week of backache that I've had, but yeah, absolutely. Definitely got to stay. Um, Bar the odd person, uh, yeah, it was always a, a five-year difference, so you were able to see everyone your own age in the same room, um, the same building. So uh, I, <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> it's funny to go to the Brighton Centre, not be having it going to the bar and everything, and sort of watching the band. It's, but I thought it was, it was yeah. wonderful. I found it quite emotional actually. So yeah, you're on and did it hurt you? Break. Sorry. Did it hurt you? No, I thought, I, I, I almost like wanted to say, did you actually do anything? Because I didn't feel anything. It was ridiculous. I was exactly the same. So anyone who's scared out there, don't be, because it really doesn't hurt at all. No. I didn't feel a thing. No, not. It was brilliant. So, oh. yeah. So you're on your Easter holiday now, which is not a holiday. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've got two weeks off. Yes. Two weeks off, but um, still got all the work to do. Oh, I've got lots of, <laughs> lots and lots of work to do. Oh, Buffy saying it's hello. Buffy. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yeah, Easter. So at least it takes the pressure off of going to lectures. Um, so that's the one good thing. However, yeah. it, I've got lots to do still. So, yeah. I guess that's what, about what you, you signed up for. It's, at least it's a change, though. You've got a bit of a change of the routine happening. You're not going to yeah. be glued to Zoom quite so much. No, that's um, it. That's exhausting, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah, it is. It really is. Um, I'm yeah, just um, ticking over with my projects, really, and doing some consultations and things like that. So um, it's all good. Catching up good. with my course, which I've found so so enlightening and I'm I'm deeply into um finding all about fire retardants now and I am really really shocked what I'm finding out yeah it's um I'm doing um two purpose blocks of flats so fire regulations are really important for everything I'm specifying but it's like a, a rabbit warren isn't it you go down it and then you're led to so many different places and what you're finding out is there any takeaways that you've learned from it well, I mean, this is a very American course that I'm doing, and I'm hoping all the time that they they are worse than us, but I don't know if it's much different. But um, so there's a, a documentary that I recommend you watch called Toxic Hot Seat, <clears throat> and they in in this documentary, the Chicago Herald Trib and Tribune is that the name of the paper? 
Chicago Tribune um, did an investigation on fire retardancy and basically at the root of it is the American tobacco industry were asked to make cigarettes that didn't continue burning and they just turned the whole thing around from ignition to fuel and they they just said no we've got to sort out the you know um, the, the the burning length of the fuel so the foams that are burning and they they turned it all into this huge piece that was all about the problem is the sofas that people have and what they're made of rather than the ignition um, and this was all re revealed by this um, these newspaper reporters and uh, yeah it's really really alarming you know fire officers more fire officers are dying <clears throat> from cancer than actual in fires you know they're having they're breathing in these toxic uh, horrible toxic soups you know from from fires because it's a mixture of lots of things um, and some of them are female and some of them are breastfeeding their new babies you know and it's kind of well yeah. it goes goes to prove everything that we discuss and chat about um buying good quality handmade you know really thought through pieces it makes a difference for the all the way through um do you know that wood sequesters the carbon as you even if you order a wood piece of furniture and so it keeps the carbon in the wood the whole of the life cycle yeah. also wood stops um it doesn't burn through so so if you look at the wood it's really good for fire retardancy without doing anything to it yeah well this is the thing create something from a petrochemical then it is inherently needing to have a flame retardant applied to it so you know if it if a more natural material yeah is less less likely because it's not made of highly chemical in ingredients in the first place so it's kind of like you're and they, layering nature, on the problem yeah nature has a way of sorting itself out so um yeah but what the other thing to know is asbestos is a natural product so not all natural products are good i didn't know be, that yeah, asbestos is, is the name of the place in near Quebec where they mine this, this rock that doesn't... doesn't and they yet. don't do anything to it to make it... No, I mean, they can turn it into all these different things and it gets mined. I mean, it's not mined there anymore because it's been banned, but it's mined in other parts of the world. That um, So, yeah, so natural isn't always good. <laughs> but, no. uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, if it's not... If it doesn't, if it doesn't burn, then it doesn't need a flame retardancy. Is the the, the root of it? So yeah, it's really really alarming, and um, I'm really concerned but about it. To be honest, the trouble is, the more you read and the more you inform yourself, the more urgency you have to do something about it, don't you? So it. Um, I, know, I know the BIID have um, addressed this with the government, um, and it's all in pro process. In progress but you know I don't know where it will go but it's bigger it, than me. <laughs> it, it always starts with policy doesn't it and filters through so um, but we can all do our bit anyway so. Yeah I mean the thing is if we know what we're buying and we can make choices that are informed then it doesn't matter what the policies are you know it's kind of like people can make their own decisions here so this is where education always is is the thing. Oh, you, you say that uh, um, other designers, other interior designers and people who go out there and greenwash, they still will not educate their clients and will still specify things that aren't very good for the environment. They'll choose kitchens that have got formaldehyde in. They'll choose um, sofas that are combustible and not fire retardant and made out of all sorts, of not natural fibers. So, so these people, have a, a duty of care in terms of my my feelings to actually inform their clients now you know this is a whole we're we're going towards 2030 and we've got to really concentrate and, and be mindful about it so yeah and I, it, I i'm quite grateful that i don't actually have to specify all that much soft furniture it's because it's a minefield you know you've got you've got re legislation that we've got to abide to you know we've got to safely 
specify for our projects. But, um, but it's not just soft furnishings, is it? It's things like MDF and, and all sorts of yeah, things so like that. Yeah, about so. flame retardant and, and what I've just put. You know, oh, yeah. Bones, Sorry. Bones fillings, you know, it's, I find, I'm, I just find that really, really alarming. Um, uh, so enough of the politics, because <clears throat> otherwise we're going to. Oh, yeah. No, it's, talking it's, about well, I guess it's politics, but it's kind of it's been around a long time and been a problem for a long time. So it's kind of. Many... And, and, and you <laughs> and I feel exactly the same about it. We, we've both got a sense of urgency and a sense of care about what we do and about and a sense of education. You don't need to be doing your course to re-educate yourself. But you choose to because you want to extend your knowledge and help take it further. So, you know, that's that's a really good thing. So, yes. Yeah. So we were going to talk about some books today, weren't we? Yeah, we are. Was such a lovely idea because you recommended a book to me, which um, was perfect for my clients who have um, basically their back garden is beach, and you talked about your gardening by the sea book. It's beautiful, isn't it? Lovely. It's gorgeous cover. I never knew that oh. beaches were a seaside my mum and dad have got freezers in their front garden always they've had those and beautiful but um my client was so grateful I sent them the book and I and I got a copy as well and it's beautiful and it's was he the head gardener for the for the parks yeah for the parks in Brighton How nice. um but also he had a very good pedigree and everything else so uh J.R.B. Everson is his name um it's a lovely book but we'll put all of these in the list as well. Yeah. Yeah. And he, um, I love how he starts because the first thing he talks about is wind. <laughs> and because that is what we're up against, wind and salty air, you know, um, I thought it was brilliant. So, so, thank so you. the reason um, I got into this book and recommended it to you is because I'm doing a project for Madeira Drive, yeah. um, the arches down there. So when you do, because I design in an environment, environmentally literate way, we have to look at the wind, the solar, um, all of the environmental elements, the biodiversity, it all affects it. So, so his little wind analysis is oh. great. And oh, so much, fantastic. so much so I based my whole design on his wind exploration. I love the fact that he's got a suit on with his handkerchief there oh. and testing it. So, so my whole de design is based on basically if you the wind hits against a solid wall, yeah, it, um, it, it really will come at it with force. However, if you create slats, um, either like willow slats or slats, yeah. the, the wind then blows through it, so it creates less of a wind tunnel. So, so by him trying and testing bits and pieces is really really good. So this has oh, been nice. invaluable to me. Oh, it's so nice. So did you just discover that in the, the library or did you, was it a recommendation? I was actually doing some research into um, gardening, coastal gardening. Um, and I was just lucky enough to kind of pick this up. Oh. And then um, I turn into a bit of an investigator when I'm researching a project <laughs> and, um, and just found it by chance. And the, it was only a couple of quid. I, don't, I think we've probably got the last copies, haven't we? <laughs> probably. So it I've got a lovely old book as well. So this is my mum's. Okay, architecture. What it's is it a called? Lover's book of architecture, and in the front is it's Susan Beard, my mum's maiden name. So she was a teenager when she had this book, and it's I. I think it's one of the reasons that I got, got into design. My mum has been a really big influence. She's, a, she's um, been a friend of the uh, Royal Academy for as long as I can remember. And I used to go, you know, I've always got taken to art exhibitions and <clears throat> galleries and photography exhibitions. She's really into photography. But this um, was a very influential book, just going through all the periods of, of architecture. And it's like when you talk about um, when you're learning something, you have to go back to learn what's gone before. The You're talking about cooking and you learn the basics of, and that for me is that, and I bet you've got an equivalent. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, the, 
Now, this book could be classed as quite sexist. sexist. It's about <laughs> the, the housewife. Oh, but, is it? Uh, but he does go on to talk about um, basically it doesn't have to be a housewife. It's a how it's about having pride in where you live and how um, it, so it's called Forgotten Household Crafts. Oh, OK. Um, so basically how we used to run our homes, which is how we all to kind of do it now, is how to wallpaper, how to weave, how to um, and going back to things like butter making so before we so we we have lots of things on we we used to just buy butter from a supermarket we don't think how about how it's churned or no. the containers it comes in and things <clears> like <throat> that um preserving food bottling and canning storing oh, food so it's um it's quite a nice um yeah how it's a food. it's a really nice old book uh, yes. that really describes everything. So again, I, I kind of love this because um, it takes you back to sort of handmade things. So like smocking and embroidery. Oh. So you, could, you can actually bring all of these things into your design areas mm. as well and, and create some really cool things. So. Um, oh, how lovely. I've never heard of that book. This isn't no. similar at all, but it's sort of, um, it just reminded me. So this is called Making Kind Choices, and it's by Ingrid Newkirk, who is the woman behind Peter, the people for the ethical treatment of animals. And they're okay. the people who have done all the exposés, which were the, the, the core of the course that I did on vegan design. You know, you need to know that these think why these things are a problem. And they were the people that went and did found out what the problems were. I don't know how they can do it. Really wonderful people because the things that we had to watch, just horrible, but anyway. But this is all about um, leaving animals out of your life, basically, and not, not a, you know, um, making kind choices that don't involve animals. And it goes from every part of your life, really, right the way through to what you want to do at the end of your life. If you want to write a will and leave money to, you know, animal charities and things like that but it's a lovely lovely book and I've got a really old copy but it's just been um, revised and and it's for sale but it's lovely and it goes into all the you know the home stuff the what you wear what you eat there's some recipes it's it's lovely I think is that quite influential to you for being a vegan or yeah yeah yes I I can't tell you I'm eating the loveliest food and it's just that I've left a whole group of ingredients out of what I eat. It doesn't mean that I don't still love food and love eating nice things, you know. I, um, it's so easily done. You just kind of need the steer sometimes. And, and also you don't realise how many things have got animals in. And there's a huge long list of all the various, you know, there's loads of stuff. I mean, I did a post the other day about bone china. <clears throat> I mean, it's in its name. You sh we should have all <laughs> clocked that. But bone china is like a huge percentage of bone ash within it, and it's kind right. of like if you if you yeah if you don't really want to eat off a plate made of animals, and it's good to know. But about do you know chalk is made from animal? Uh, basically, it's formed from uh, animal skeletons over yeah. the years, like yeah. fish and things like that. So um, yeah, but there's kind yeah, of like in the you're last... not making it. Your, yeah, yeah it's evolving that's, and that's an awful lot of time involved as well isn't it it's not an industry but yeah no. yeah you're right it's um so i eat plant-based food that's um and i so i don't eat any meat and i'm very conscious about how i buy and things like that um but do you I'm still not, have dairy i'm not vegan um so yeah i still have eggs and honey and because I never uh, understand when like people that. say plant-based. I always thought it was the same thing. <laughs> no, plant-based is I don't eat meat. So um, so that that's what I mean by that. So I don't do it for any other reason than um, well, I do do it for a reason now. But when I started, it was basically um, I went off of meat 
never really liked it. It didn't sit well with me. So, um, so then changed it. So that leads me to this then. So again, because I'm designing uh, Madeira arches at the moment, yeah. we're doing a QPOL, uh, Continuous Productive Urban Landscapes. So basically it's about creating urban agriculture in our, in our towns. Yeah. Um, so have you heard of Silo? Yes, yeah, I've been so, there. <laughs> so Silo used to be in Brighton, now it's London. Mm. Um, but it, masters. Yeah, but it's a whole great system. So he even uses compost in some of his cooking. He'll wrap the compost around um, carrots and things like that. It's not the compost machines we know. You spent £20,000 <laughs> on a composting machine that takes it down to kind of really almost like sand-like oh, ingredients. Really? Mm -hmm. um, but the whole you realize from the food systems that you're creating, where it comes from, the processes it goes through. So whether you're vegan, um, a meat eater, you should know where your food is coming from, mm. how it's arriving at your plate. And if you don't agree with any of those things, you should cut it out. You know, if, um, if you, like you have done, um, but it, if you just say, okay, I don't understand it, but I'm going to eat meat anyway, then, then you shouldn't really do that. I, I think if you're going to eat meat, you've got to be prepared to gut meat, kill meat, and really understand what it's about. So, um, so again, I love his food systems about um, the way it all comes into our plates, the seasons, the growing, the seasonality, yeah. which we should all be eating. Yes. Um, so... That's a really, really good book. Um, Have you they, seen his new restaurant in London? Have you seen photos? I yeah. Mean, I, it's taken it all the way through to his design, and, and I've forgotten the designer's name, but they've done a beautiful job, and it's really... Natalie, Nina, Nina. Um, um, yeah, that sounds right. But, the, you know, there's some really lovely things in there. That she's got cork, she's got um, mycelium, she's got tea Samil, who are my favourite mycelium people they they've done the lighting um there's all sorts of really clever conscious materials that are beautiful it doesn't look woolly or you know what people would think sustainability looks like at all it's just been done in a really beautiful way so, so check that out the restaurant that you're talking about it's um i agree i love her interiors i, I love that interior yes um i love you know people think oh how hard wearing is cork on the floor but it's in a restaurant. It's really a warm one. But the great thing about cork is the it regrows all the time, yeah. so it regenerates itself. So it's a we should be leaving oak to the um, to the birds and the biodiversity. Yeah. No one touch oak. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no one touch oak uh, for your buildings, in your furniture or anything else. We should be looking at sweet chestnut, cork, bamboo, and things like that. That um, that are easily growable or that needs a die back cut down because of a yeah. reason yeah so mm. um so yeah so so that's right along the same lines that Ooh. next one well I love we haven't got ages have we so i mustn't maybe go into i might just do a really quick one but this is um this is from so oh at school i did woodwork metal work but i had to when i did my choices i mean they, it was open for girls but it was still you know there were still girls learning to type at big typewriters you know I'm sure it was the same for you at your school but so I didn't particularly get into um drafting or um I did a bit of metal work a bit of woodwork but so when I got to my course <clears throat> my furniture design degree course um I was the only one on the course that hadn't learned drafting properly and I had so much catching up to do. I felt like, anyway, so my boyfriend at the time, younger brother, this was his CDT book from his school. And so I, I nabbed it and it's brilliant. And it's got all like the third angle project, projection, how to draw. And I taught myself basically using that book. So I love that book. <laughs> okay, so matchy matchy. Um, yeah. So, I taught myself how to draw with this book oh, and actually you? the uni still recommends it today. So, um, so if you want to learn a one point perspective, 
a two point perspective. Um, yep. If you want to learn how to hatch, um, hang on, let me. <laughs> That's all in here. Well. <clears throat> um, so yeah, just it literally, it will show you everything. Uh, it, uh, it, it's really easy to follow this through as well. Um, yeah. And I've had this for years and years and years. So um, I love it. Yeah. So same thing. It's oh, great. Yeah, isn't exactly. It? It's I think I've got a page like that. So another yeah. couple of quick ones were so this was um, this was on my reading list for trying to find the same page. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Furniture design degree. <laughs> So we had a huge reading list, which is great. But I just love the fact that Delaware Pavilion is in there in Bexhill. Sorry, um, show me the front cover again. <laughs> what one's that? What's that called? Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia 20th Century Architecture. So Delaware Pavilion in, in uh, Bexhill, which I've always loved. There's Basil Spencer's University of Sussex, which is where my mum worked um, and I was at the place scheme and everything so yeah it, it's just brilliant brilliant book so I love that we had um, design and designers as well and one uh, sort of like a, a directory of furniture design it's going way way back it was brilliant so yeah I haven't laid my hands on those but yeah love those so I'll quickly show the one I know you've got <laughs> oh I love this book as yours hasn't got lots of tabs in the top like mine. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, honestly, every time yeah, I'm like, oh, is this going to work? And it's got all the ergonomics in it. I mean, not not that we're so, meant to be working on airports, but or no. We? Do you know what's essential for this is if I'm uh, doing a public space, I can look at the size of a wheelchair, the yes. turn of it. I yeah. can, it, it will give me the height of a wine glass, a bottle. Oh, um, so literally it. somebody has measured everything and it's in this book. So it's, if you're- it's auditoriums, it's, it's, you know, it's restaurants. I, I use it a lot. I yeah, use it. I use it a lot as well. It's, it's one of these things that um, it's just essential. It, it, it shows you the height of people sitting, standing, moving. So basically, They've measured everything and put it in the book. So if you're a designer, this is essential. It's um, it's really important. I've got umpteen other ergonomic books because we did a lot of ergonomics on my course, <clears throat> but none of them. I don't like any of them as much as this one. This is definitely my favourite by far. Um, have you ever read this book, Kevin McLeod's Principles of Home? No. I learned an awful lot about sustainability from this. And he, he kind of has these um, principles. How many are there? And he, he just basically goes through them all. The 40, yeah, 43 principles. And it's just everything about how you build a home, how you heat a home, how you illuminate, what you put in it. It's, it's so good. I really, really, really love this book. Okay. Okay, so then I do humanities as well. So, um, so my, we were each given an architect um, or a building to write about. Uh, so I've just done my humanities essay and handed it in. Um, and I did a guy called um, um, Ar uh, Walter, Walter Siegel is oh, his yes. name. Yeah, so, yeah. so I did my essay on Siegel Close. So Siegel Close is a close in London that people bought um, council, uh, they were on the council list waiting for right. houses, and they were given the option to, um, to build their own houses. So basically, uh, Walter Siegel acted, he was the architect, but he acted as a, um, a kind of support to the South builders. So he gave a very articulate um, handbook about building. But the very clever thing is he built it all sustainably out of things that they could find easily. So everything was built on a 600 wide panel and a 50 mil batten. I remember you telling me, yeah. So the whole houses, 600, 600, the floors, the, the walls, everything. Now, the worst part of that is you've got the 600 doorway, which is quite narrow. So for yeah. furniture going in. <laughs> yes. um, 
But also all of the interior walls are bolted together. So you, it allows everyone to change all of their spaces around to adapt it as their family grows and all sorts. Um, what period was this? What, what uh, 70s. So <laughs> this was basically leading on from Thatcherism when we had a housing crisis and this Walter Siegel uh, basically came up with the idea of this South build and but approached he, Lewisham easy Council. It's easy to disassemble and, and repair and all the things that we're supposed to be doing now. It sounds Built like for deconstruction. Yeah. So how brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then what it's done is because they're self builders, it's created a, um, a really strong community and they have to, they're off grid. So they have to maintain, um, not maintain it, but work out all of the, um, the energy through to the place themselves. Um, and now these are, it's quite interesting because they've stopped being council houses as such um, and they sell for a lot of money. So uh, oh, do they? They're yeah. Desirable. How lovely. So that was really interesting. I'm just going to whittle it down to two more books, I think, because so that we need oh. two more. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, what, shall I keep, do you want to keep, yeah. all right. No. Well, this is, this is, if anyone wants to learn about vegan design, I, I think this is excellent. So Aline is an Australian interior designer and she talks, she's the sort, I mean, I thought I'd learned all of it. And then she's telling me more in here than I knew. She told me, you know, lots of things. And I share a lot of her facts on Instagram um, because she's brilliant. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very good book and I recommend people read it. Oh, I, we're going to have to do another one because I've got loads of biophilic <laughs> books and, and all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, we'll do another one. We'll do another one. Um, OK, so nature very focuses on my designs, how biodiversity comes in. Um, I decided I really don't like mechanical venting, um, you know, at all. And I'm uh, so... I, I designed looking at the way the sun goes in, the airflow through openable windows um, yeah. and things like that. So this isn't about that. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is my favorite ever landscape designer. This okay. man is a genius and <laughs> I not only love his work, but I love his drawings as well. So his name's um, Pierre Udoff. And um, so basically he's done things uh, like the New York High Line, the bridge there. Uh, oh, let me show I you. love it there. Oh, he is, his work is just beautiful. Hang on. I don't, just the colors, look at that for inspiration. Um, uh, 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 I'm just gonna try and find some of his, um, so it's all about perennials, but Thank so you. I, if I'm looking at a colour scheme, I'll generally go to things like this. But this is his drawing designs. <laughs> and now I very much, my drawings look very much funny like this. Um, and I love the fact that, you know, just they're all hand drawn around, it explains all the planting schemes and things like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, That's pretty he, it's a mind map business going on there but yeah so so I will go to plants and nature for, for looking at texture colour um and there's another one got, it's drawings. lovely that you've got such a, a a clear process of how you work yeah just um it, it's what influences me and that's these are the kind of books I pick up first if I'm looking for um a colour scheme there's there's one in here if I just need to find it very quickly da, 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 da. Um, I should have marked it beforehand, shouldn't I? If that would have just been too organised. <laughs> uh, did I show you that one? Look at that. Oh, lovely. Beautiful. Can you imagine if that was an interior and you're picking up on sort of um, mustard and okras against like a cushion that's bright red or mm. if you're looking at some tiles and, you know, yeah. it's all it's all there it's all, for you. It's all spelt out for you. I need yeah. to photograph the um, forsythia in the garden at the minute. It doesn't um, bloom for long, but it's the the brightest yellow you could ever, and it's so intense. It's it's beautiful. It's yeah. nature is just just you know it's all there, isn't it? Oh, 
You got that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're both showing different editions, I presume, of Cradle yeah. to Cradle. Yes. Um, so go on. Uh, um, oh, mine was upside it's, down. It's your <laughs> one. So my one is all made of the same material. It's all... Yes, mine is literally the same. Yeah. It's kind of this sort of plastic that's recycled and recyclable. Yeah. So I'm in the process of reading this. So this is one of my book pile ones, but I'm loving it. It's wonderful. And cradle to cradle label, it's just my pinnacle um, third party certification. <laughs> my, you know, it's got everything going on in it. There's water, there's people, you know, there's, there's, there's the, the sort of sustainability as in energy materials, but there's also the other parts of sustainability that I think people forget water. People. Well, this is the only way we should be designing now. Yeah. So, so, so it talks about material banks, resources. So basically they say uh, rubbish is not rubbish. It's just stuck in the wrong place. Yeah. And there is um, no away. There is no away. <laughs> no. Don't throw things away. There is no away because it just it's there. So we've got. No, to... so, so again, it's just looking at things as a resource, you know. So compost is a resource. You can use it for energy as silo show, but you can use it as a food matter. You know, you can use it so many different things. You can use, um, I'm in the process of ripping out my um, 1980s kitchen that's horrible. <laughs> and, um, but I hacked off these tiles off of the wall. And, um, and I think actually a bit of a clean up, I might be able to do something different with those. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's not only, things like the tiles and things that we should be saving so I'm not I don't go into people's houses and think let's start again I think what can we keep or what yeah. can we repurpose and reuse and things like yeah. that and so much so that I look at the home office I'm doing you know I they're built on clay so we could look at a round earth wall out of clay we could look at doing a chalk plaster if it's you know, around Brighton and things like that so it's about using, I did a recommendations for an assisted living scheme in uh, Swindon for um, some architects. And uh, Swindon was basically uh, built on London clay. And London clay, as we know, is a flower and ball color. Uh, but also, you know, you could use that. So I recommend using the round earth wall in areas um, to take them through into areas. So. Um, so again, you're looking at the, not only uh, um, what you're taking out, but what's on the land and what you can use. Yeah. And it's, it, it takes more time, but it's really exciting. It, it does. And there's, a, there's a, a difficult element of this, which is sometimes the clients aren't in the same place as you. They're not passionate about this and they just want new everything. And that can be a little bit hard to manage, but... <clears throat> I found that you know there's a lot of clients whether or not they call it sustainability they just want to be uh, sensible and frugal and kind of like why 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 throw something away if you can make it work so you've kind of got to, it's how you package have you is your earphone gone <laughs> I lost you <laughs> someone rang me I was just talking about Sorry. I was just saying how we're so enthusiastic about that but sometimes clients aren't and you've kind of got to frame it in a different way for them. And sometimes, you know, they can come at it from a frugal point of view or, um, you know, being a bit thrifty and rather than they're not, sometimes they want all new and it's a bit of a sell selling act. Well, I, kind of, I think that they educate me and I ed educate them. So I won't scare yeah, them yeah. things at the start, but I'll introduce things. And to be quite honest, Clients are usually on board for it. You know, when you're saying, okay, let's replace that with a living wall or let's replace that with a natural material, they kind of suddenly yeah. get excited. And the, I've just taken they, all of them. They just want to know it's going to work, don't they? Yeah. You've gone quieter now. Because then I'm talking to you. And not... <laughs> <laughs> I've got all confused. Never mind, doesn't matter. Can you hear me okay, though? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just um, You're a bit faint. Okay, is that better? No, it's the same, but it's not. I can hear you. It's fine. It's just 
it just dropped in volume. <laughs> I, I should be back on again. Don't worry. Um, yeah, so so I I think um, I mean I've been taught by Duncan Baker Brown uh, amongst other very um, notable people, and they say by building naturally it shouldn't cost any more money. You know, a builders they put more money onto it because they're generally scared about how to use the products. So again, it's an education thing. And if we can get people on board and use ourselves as case studies and our projects to, to let people know that these aren't difficult options, then, then it doesn't seem so scary. These are the ways of building yeah. and designing from primitive times that we're kind of realigning. And yes, we don't want to live like cavemen, but we want to go back to... Um, looking after our planet and ourselves yeah it's just learning a new process and the getting over the learning curve of that so yeah 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 are you should we leave it there today have yeah, you got I'm anything just, else that you're burning to show us no, I'm, I'm done i'm just going to <laughs> reading this coming up oh brilliant last one oh. so yeah so, so much so. reading I've got, I've got a massive to, pile as well. Taking the countryside side, um, agriculture and architecture, four walls and a roof. So basically taking design back down to the essentials and then taking it from there. Yeah. Um, oh, this one I have read actually. I don't know. Um, so this is uh, the meaning of human existence by Edward O. Wilson. And basically, oh, Edward that's Wilson a... started the hypothesis of biophilic yes. uh, design. So yes. Frum, um, started started it, and then he went on and, and created the hypothesis. So it's just looking about where we fit again and, and how we design and things like that. So that's my idea. Well, I might have to borrow that one off you. Yeah, so... so yeah we can always we can always do another edition of this i think we could go on i've still got here ones here to talk about so let's let's leave it for another one i think but yeah. it's been so nice catching up hello buffy <laughs> oh baby oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah um we, and jane made it through to the end last time and got her gold star did you see that oh you she yeah <laughs> every week so um... she's a, a loyal watcher yeah, so um, oh. but, you, know, you can see I, I've suddenly got animated talking about books. I'm uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, well, like like we always say, learning is just invaluable, isn't it? And I haven't even gone into the books that I'm listening to. <laughs> oh God, but, should we do that? Uh, uh, yeah, time? yeah, that we'll save that for another one as well. Okay, cool. Oh, <laughs> it's so nice to talk to you again, Angela. Yeah, you too, Chloe. So um, enjoy the sunshine. It's I will. Well, I think tonight. I will get out for a walk today. Is what I should say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm making sure that um, I've got to do more exercise because I've got um, loads of lockdown weight to lose. And... You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> just, um, just I kind of got to think of more onesies and tracksuits for two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just. It's bounded into them. I'm not. I know, and the, the time of year isn't very conducive to running outside and things. So, no, oh, lovely. Well, the, you're, you know, it's good. It's good. It's spring. It's a good time for this. So, let's let's get you. healthier. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, do that. So, see you later. Lovely to see you. Bye. Bye.